ಕಾರಸಿಕಮಿಪಾಲಿಲಿ ಸ್ವಾಪ್ತಿಯ ಚರಣ ಕಿಂಕರಿಂ ಕುರು ಅಹೋ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ಮಹೋ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾ ವ್ರಜೋಕಸ ಯನ್ಮಿತ್ರ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸನಾತನ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೇತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌಡ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಬೋಲ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುದೇವ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಸೋಪಾದ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಗೋಣಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಪ್ರಭು ಕೀ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧರ ಮಂಜು ಕೀ ಜಯ 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 ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧೇಶ So I want to carry on a little bit about from the topic that we last were touching upon and <clears throat> with a meditation and an idea and I don't know why I just thought of that verse but maybe unintentionally or subconsciously it came but aho bhagyam aho bhagyam nanda gopa prajokasam yan mitram paramanandam Purnam Brahma Sanatanam. It's a really sweet meditation verse. And it's kind of, it, it touches on this mood of sweet opportunity rather than forced spiritual, you could say, like masochism. Right? Sweet opportunity instead of i have to do it this or if i don't do it this if i don't do it this my parents told me someone told me i have to do it but our mood is sweet sweet opportunity and you could say even more than that we were talking about this at lunch in the program it's almost like um the mood of realizing something you already had but you didn't realize it we're trying to realize something that we already possess meaning that's rightfully ours but we just don't know it and we haven't understood it and so we haven't like it's like uh, in our room we have like this amazing box that we never opened it inside there's like this invaluable treasure and we just oh it's always sitting in the corner So we never bothered to open it. It's just sitting there under our bed. Like imagine our parents left it for us. And we never opened it. Oh, my parents gave it to me. I yeah, yeah, whatever. But then one day you opened it and you see this like fulgent shining gemstone. Like 200,000 carats. <laughs> <laughs> just this like ball. Fulgent sapphire. So we have this thing that's ours is waiting for us and we we not only deserve it it's ours our parents left it for us because it's something they know is ours that's what mahaprabhu talks about to satan goswami this it's it's like frozen coin please <laughs> you open it and stick it in the stick it in the bag <laughs> Mahaprabhu said there's a buried treasure that is yours rightfully yours your parents left it for you you just never opened it you never looked into it you left it there because it's like oh you kind of took it for granted it's just there but for us this verse aho bhagyam it encapsulates that mood of like having captured and and taken account and value for that great thing that is your rightful possession that you just haven't realized yet and so it's a mood of like great joy when you find that thing that like makes everything make sense and be completely meaningful and you find it and then it's like you're ready to jump for joy that's this verse aho bhagyam aho bhagyam like oh great fortune oh great fortune nanda gopa prajokasam yan mitram paramanandam their best friend is personified bliss yan mitram paramanandam 
Purnang Brahma Sanatanam, the complete, absolute truth, embodiment of all spiritual ecstasy, all sweetness, all love, that son of Nanda Maharaj and Jashoda Mata, Nanda Nandan Krishna, he is our best friend. That is this verse. And so, the idea is that the Atma, our soul, is nothing but part and parcel of that Sri Krishna. That is who we are. And yet, we've forgotten him, we've turned away for whatever reason, and we're looking for meaning in so many other directions, we're looking for fulfillment, for happiness. But all we have to do is, it's right there, it's right there in our, you could say in your bead bag, or it's right there on your lips. It's not even in the bead bag. It's, in your, it's on your tongue, Krishna. Or Vaishnav say, Mahaprabhu says, Chaita Dharpana Marjanam. It's in your heart. All you need to do is wipe off the dust. Yan Mitrang Paramanandang, your best friend, Krishna, is there. All you have to do is decide that now I'm ready to have a relation with you. And that relation with Krishna doesn't negate anything. It only, you could say, magicifies everything. It makes everything special and meaningful. Anything that's good becomes better. And anything that's bad, a problem, is lost. So when we make relation with Krishna, we don't lose anything that was better that we didn't have. We were talking today, like imagine you're going on a long journey and you're carrying all these random bags full of heavy things that you don't need. So when we come to Krishna sometimes, okay, that bag may have to be left behind. I don't need that bag full of bricks. I don't need that bag full of rocks. Let me set it down. So sometimes we have to, some things are given up on the journey. But anything that is valuable, Krishna doesn't discard. He purifies. That's why we're talking about the body like a temple. You know, and having respect for devotees where, you know, when we see devotees, we should have honor and respect. There's a story of Gorkshadas Babaji Maharaj. We were telling different stories on this day. It was really interesting. <clears throat> so many amazing stories. One man came with his newly wedded wife. He said, oh, I brought, I have one Krishna Dasi. And I want you to bless our relationship. And Babaji Maharaj, oh, very good. Every day you should do Arati, offer, offer Prashad, and then give her Prashad, take her remnants, and do Puja. You're so fortunate. Never try to enjoy. And the man became afraid and left. The point is that Krishna's devotees are something very special. Very special. Don't, you know, anyone who's a devotee, you offer pranam. Ambarish Maharaj, when he followed Akadashi, each of his 11 senses is engaged in Krishna's service, and he would touch the bodies of the devotees and offer pranam and consider his life successful. And what are the glories of the devotees? In the Bhagavatam, Gurudev asked a question. He said, Krishna came to you right now and were to say, I'll give you any boon, what would you ask for? What would you ask for? Anybody? Gurudev said, many people gave many answers. He said, okay, this is good, this is okay, this is okay. But he said, the most important thing is what Sastra shows, all the different great personalities, whenever they were offered a boon, they simply asked, May I have devotion for your lotus feet by always being in the association of your devotees. Let me always have sadhu sangat, association with like-minded, affectionate, and advanced devotees. Like-minded, affectionate, that's what goes back to what we were touching on before. Friendship with devotees, but positive, spiritual, uplifting friendship. Toward helping us we develop that mood of yan mitrang paramanandang. That's the mood of the Prajabhasis. We want to develop relation with Krishna where it becomes almost free of any formality. Just he's our best friend. And that's what the Prajabhasis have. There's another really beautiful verse. <clears throat> that, oh, some are worshipping the Shrutis. How's it go? Shrutinitade, Bharatamanye, Bhavantavisha, Ahamiha Nandam Rajay. That some are worshipping the Shrutis, the Smritis, and other things, all afraid of this or that. Everyone's doing some kind of religious process full of fear. Some are worshipping this, some are doing that. 
What am I doing? I'm just meditating on the courtyard of Nanda Baba, where the supreme absolute truth is a little boy is rolling in the dust. The Brajbasis have no fear. And so there's fear-based spirituality and there's love-based. And this mood of the Brajbasis is one of only purest sentiment of love and friendship. Even Radha and Krishna, their, their relationship is the deepest friendship. That's why they can laugh and joke. Radha Rani, one of her qualities is her expertise in joking. And we were reading about that in the qualities of Radha Rani and also Lalita Devi in, from Vilakus Manjali, how they're expert at Narama Goshtim. So there's different stories. We didn't get to all the stories, but we heard some different stories about the joking of the Sakis with Krishna. And very sweet. So this is what I want the discussion to start on, this idea of how to build relationship in a mood of sweet connection with, not in a sentimental way, but in a mature, grounded, philosophical way. And gradually that can enter within the, like this realm of the heart in a, in a mood of that we have some sense of not just purpose, but belonging and warmth and hope that we know we have faith and, and faith coming from there's different types of faith weak faith sentimental faith and deep experiential faith grounded faith like the faith a child has in the mother because he knows absolutely the mother is there protecting and so generally that faith comes from relation with great devotees sadhus who we are, impact our lives i know everyone has met different great exalted Vaishnavas and how those have positively you know impacted your lives whether you know different Vaishnavas and through association with them the process becomes not just an idea but it becomes like a realized fact you see the Vaishnavas they don't do kirtan as a chore they don't do Prikram as a chore they do it out of love because they have relationship and when we witness that relationship they have, then the process comes alive for us as well. And so it's very important in spiritual life to have a spiritual spark. It's like if you have a lawnmower, but the spark plug doesn't work. Or your car, the spark plug doesn't work. It can be a great vehicle, but without the spark plug, it's useless. So in our spiritual life, we always got to make sure the spark plug works. That will keep us inspired, enthusiastic. So we have to find that for each of ourselves. What is that spark that keeps spiritual? It's like in a relationship even. If there's no spark, then how long is it going to last? So we want to maintain that spark in our spiritual life, in our relationships. And so that spark can come from different things. But generally, in Vaishnavism, it comes from Vaishnav. We sang this Baba uh, Amar Shamana Hina. What's the last line? Vaishnava Charanavina Nahiye Samsad. Without the Vaishnava's lotus feet and shelter, there's no, no means of real spiritual success, of hope, of deliverance. So that's actually Yanmitran Paramanandam. Krishna is our best friend. But before Krishna becomes our best friend, devotees need to be our best friends. That's the mood of Bhaktivanda. The devotees are our true friends in this world. And so, this is kind of the mood we want to develop. And this is the, you could say, the buried treasure that's our rightful inheritance, just waiting for us to be mature and ready enough for it, to have the ability to appreciate it and, and honor it and utilize it. Like a mother doesn't give a child a knife. She's not ready for it. We had a mom in Radhikunj, and she was doing the great the grain ceremony and like to pick the things. And it was like, okay, the book is good, the coins are good, this is good, that is good. And then someone was Gilai was gonna do it. And I was there, I was like, where's the knife? She said, No knife, no knife, no knife. <laughs> We're like, we need a knife. And so then we got a knife and it was like a nice big kitchen knife. Hunting knife. And it was like, all this stuff was close, but she put the knife like way over there. She was afraid. And then Pavitra, right? When it was 
ready to go for everything, he like crawled around everything else and went and like grabbed the knife and went, Mom! <laughs> Just like, ah! <laughs> so, oh, and then like she tried to do it again, right? Yeah. And he went for it again, <laughs> right? Yep. So anyhow, then we were like, Shatria, she's like, no. Pravati was like, no, 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 he's Radharani's assistant in the kitchen. <laughs> but um, after he picked up the knife, we took it back. <laughs> okay, now when you're ready, when you're old enough, then you can play with the knife. Otherwise not. So we're, we're not interested in like, sent, you know, sometimes you see in India people, we had a devotee in, in Mathura, Mat who almost every arti, they would be there, Mangal arti, but like half of them, they would just start rolling on the ground <laughs> and like freaking out. And half of the arti? You almost, almost half like the people. half the arti. This one person <laughs> yeah. would always like start rolling around. And you know, it's kind of like a thing in Bengal. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna win over any hearts by kind of being like, overly wild in our sentimental kind of devotion but it's more of like a deep grounded practice and realized experience and it comes down to like what do we do when you know where is our seat of consciousness is our seat of consciousness in like genuine bhakti like mood of Sweetness towards oh, Krishna is my friend, Vaishnavas are my friend, they are our solace, our shelter, and then devotee relationships also. Devotee relationships, they are our true helpers and friends in life. It's not just Guru, it becomes like a Mayavadi thing. Just Krishna, but no Brajvasis, no Radha. Just Guru, no Vaishnavas, no devotees, no friends. And that's also not helpful. So we want to progress Sakale Milia together. Ekakiyamar Nahi Payabal alone, it's not possible. So Guru arranges all the Goshta associates. Raghunathaska Swami sings Guru Goste Gostale Shusujane Bhusuragane. He says, May O mine develop affection and love for Guru Gurao, the Guru Varga. Not just Oh, only, what is Guru? Chirukamara should say, who is Diksha, who is Shiksha? He said they are one. And they are plural, but one. So anyone who's helping develop attachment and faith, and then not only them, Gosta, Gostali, Susujane, those who are good, honest people, those who are Brahmins, those who are sadhus, friends, devotees, have honor and respect. And this way we can very nicely progress. Bhakti is a Beautiful, blissful process. It's described by Rupa Goswami. If you're hungry and you eat, your hunger is diminished. Some like happiness comes there from tasting something, right? With each bite. And so with bhakti, as you progress in bhakti, the attachment should be gradually diminishing for worldly things. Taste should be increasing for bhakti and some sense of nourishment. I remember asking, how do we know we're following Kartikshi right? How do we know we're following Brat right? He said, if desire to follow remains and enthusiasm is there, we're following everything very nicely. So you can know that. So if anyone has any points to discuss here or to bring up, then we could we could mention, I know we want to talk a little bit about Katyani Brat, but that's a long discussion. We can touch on it. Anything we want to talk about in between? Any points? No. <clears throat> so Katyani Brat is how is it connected to this idea? With every Vrat, many people can be like even with Gopi Geet, everyone was singing with a different mood. All the different groups of gopis. People follow Kadashi with different moods. People follow any Vrat. But you get what you want from the performances of, of a Vrat. A Vrat is like a vehicle for achieving a desired end. So we're doing the activity, but what do we want? That's something we have to define, understand our goal. And our goal is something clearly defined. 
So there's a few important points. I don't know if I'll go through them in order, but I'll just touch them as they come to mind. One is that Gurudev said in regards to this Vrat, the gopis were so young, they don't know what is Pati or Upapati or anything. They just heard, oh, Pati means like someone who is like you have relationship with. They don't know any words to explain what they feel. They just know, I want to have like a bond of a relationship with Krishna, not with anyone else. Upapati generally is a word defining um, like the paramour of Parakya. So unwedded, but just without any condition, just straight love. So Gurudev makes the point that the gopis in their minds, they weren't thinking Pati, they were thinking really Upapati. This is what Param Gurudev writes specifically about this brat. He said it's Upapati mood, meaning because they know there's millions of gopis doing the brat. How can they all be married to Krishna? It's not possible. And really, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, another thing he writes, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada says, Krishna is the one and only real like shelter or pati for all living entities. So when we talk about what it means to be pati, even in the context of this brat, because the verse we sing, Kartayani Mahamai Mahayogi Nebishwiri Nande Gopa Sutam Devi Patimme Kurute Namaha. In Sanskrit, it's more about like what is its function than just like, oh, a term, like husband. What is its function? So, Palan Karta, protector, maintainer. Not so much in like the patriarchal sense. <laughs> Meaning, like, you know, someone has your back, someone's there for you. Someone can look, is looking after you, has love for you, and you know, you're not like an orphan. Just that's what it means. It means you, know, you have something in someone. So Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada says, for all living entities, Krishna is the only Pati. Krishna is the only Vishai. We're all Ashray. So if you look at it like according to Sastra, Siddhanta, then the idea for every living entity is that we need to establish our relation with Krishna. That's our Krishna conscious philosophy. How to establish relation with Krishna. And that relationship should be one of Prem, love. Vancham Purusharta Krishna Prem. That is our ultimate objective, Krishna Prem. So it's not like a kind of dry, transactional kind of relationship. I'll do something for you, you do something for me. No. Bhakti means simple love. So, Patimme Kurute Namaha. That is Balan Karta mood. And that's why we sing it for Mahaprabhu. We know that, for example, Gaudiyas, we do not follow any scent, any even slightest scent of like any kind of Goranga Nagar Vat. This was an Apasampradaya. But what do we sing? Dhana more Nitananda, Pati more Gora Chandra, Prana more Jugalaki Shore. Pran, pati more Gora Chandra. My pati is Gora Chandra. It's a mood. That he is my life. That is pati me. And so, to, to, your, to, to the idea of some gopis, first we have to understand who are these gopis performing this brat. The gopis performing the brat. So that's one point I wanted to mention. is Bhakti Sandra Prabhupada, what he says. There's another... Um, Verse in the Upanishads. Nitya nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bhuvanam yo vidadati kamam. For all living entities, Krishna is the only fulfiller of any kind of desire or need. Everything can only come from Krishna. So even if you're worshipping another demigod, Krishna is the one who signs the check. If you're worshipping Indra, Ganesh, Durga, that Hanuman, that's why we say there's no need. Because you're going through the middleman, it's not necessary. If you worship, even if you worship Indra or Durga or Ganesh, Krishna is the only one who can pass the check. And so they have to take from him and they have to worship him and honor him. And so what we're doing is, you know, we're going directly to the source and understanding that he is our one and only master. You don't need to have, Krishna says, Ananya Chintayantamam. His only condition is that you be one-pointed. 
And so in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says you can worship others, you can worship different demigods, no problem. But he says, it's also my worship because only I can give any results. But you're doing yajanta avidi purvakam improperly, so you're going to not get ultimate grace. You're going to go here, there, and still continue in samsara. Worship me, come to me. That abode of my dhamma paramama is gatpana nivartam says, you don't have to come back to this world. So that's one point. Another point is, if we want to follow bhakti, what do we hear? Important? Sharanagati is important. There's another point about Katyanipa. Sharanagati is important, right? Surrender. That's the doorway to bhakti. Six stages of Sharanagati. Of the six stages, the crux described by Bhakti Siddhanta, the most important one, is Gopi Tve Varanam Tata. And when he describes it, he says this is the mood of like Pati. Gopi Tve Varanam Tata means he is my protector, my maintainer, my guardian. So think about this. The most important limb of surrender is the mood of, oh, you are my life, my maintainer, my protector, my guardian. I am yours. You are mine. That is Patimme Kurute Namaha. So Gurudev said, don't get caught up in the... If people want to follow it, the wrong idea, Gurudev discourages. Don't, it's what is the deep meaning and, and mood behind it? That, oh Krishna, may you be my life, my maintenance, my protector. May I have relation with you. Paramatma. In Bhagavatam it's described, who is Paramatma? He is like the hidden friend we are neglecting. And we're trying to turn towards him and our relationship with him, and then everything becomes meaningful. And so that's also this rut, like, oh Krishna, I've turned away from you since so long. Now I just want to realize our true friendship. That you are my dear most friend, and I'm offering my heart to you. And so it's something that it's already so, it's fact. We are Krishna's angsa, part and parcel expansion of coming from Krishna and from Shakti. But from Krishna, Krishna says, I am Hambija Pratakrita. Everything comes from me. You come from me. So establish your relation with me. One other point. In this verse, this is actually a verse. There's a few more important point, points. <clears throat> I know it's a lot of points in the points. So anyhow, we can reiterate or we can note it down, whatever, as you like. But another important point is that... <clears throat> Krishna says in verse 25, chapter 22, 10th canto, I know that in this process you are worshipping me, mud archanam. And this is something Param Gurudev writes about at length. So when anyone thinks it's in Braj, everything is indirect. So they're doing this, it's called Katayani Brat. But Krishna says, you are doing my archan. This is the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's not like, oh, I'm pulling out of here and there. This is Bhagavatam, 25, 20, chapter 22, text 25, 10th canto. It says, oh, go peace. You are doing my archan. Nice. Right on cue. Well, whatever that ringtone is, you need to share it. It's an alarm. Jai. Nice meditation. <clears throat> okay, so when people... This Katanivra is something that people have a controversy over. Why? Because it's naturally controversial. Mm -hmm. Because in this world, most people want to keep you bound to them. And if you go too far towards Krishna, it's like, oh, Mira, Pagal, bring her back. So they want to limit. Yes. I have a, a question. Okay, to, so let me. It goes me. after your point. Um, <clears throat> Generally, like if someone in India wants to like join the mud, parents get very upset. It's okay to like chant sometimes, but don't become like a Babaji. Mm -hmm. Don't become mad after Krishna. Then you're lost to this world. Bhandu Sange Jhaditava Ranga Parihas. Don't go to Keshi Ghat and see Krishna. He'll steal your heart. Even the ladies in Braj who had love for Krishna, they wouldn't let their young daughter in law, go to see Krishna. There's a story when Krishna comes home, right? What do we sing? The 13th of Gopi Geet. Right? When Krishna's coming back, everyone is going to see Krishna. Even the mother in law and, and sister in law are going to see Krishna. But the daughter in law wants to go? No, no, don't go. Black snake, he'll bite you. You'll become mad. 
And so Krishna, as he's coming, he knows that they forbid her. But she opened the door and just peeked out onto the road. And then Krishna saw her sideline glance, knew. And so he twisted the tail of a calf. And then the calf ran. And he was holding the tail of the calf. And it went right up to her door. And Krishna just pinched her cheek and left. And then what happened? She became, she lost everything. And when their mother-in-law came back, she saw, oh, she's been captured by this black ghost snake. Even though she was there, she had already lost everything, but there's like a controlled loss. When it's freshly lost, it's like you become mad. And so they gave her chores to do. They told her to churn yogurt. Instead, she was churning mustard seed or sesame seed. They gave her a baby and they said, they gave her a baby in one arm because they thought we have to bring her back. Baby in one arm and a clay pot in another and they said, go fetch water and a rope. And she set the pot down and put the rope on the baby and started lowering him into the well. And the other lady said, oh, Lali, Lali, what are you doing? You're putting the baby in. And she like came back to her sense. So this is the danger of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> it's the danger of Krishna consciousness. But this is also... The point, you know, we sing Jamuna Salile Aharane Gia, Pagalini Prai. We want to become Pagalini Prai means almost mad. Controlled madness. This is Krishna consciousness. The baby was okay though, right? Baby yeah, was okay. Yeah. <laughs> she she was just started. Yeah, just there was all the other, because in Raj Wells, there's like everyone goes to the well. So there's like 20 ladies. Said, oh, mad girl, what are you doing? And they stopped her. So the baby was okay. <laughs> But the point is that developing this, you know, relation, it's like Vaishnavas have to sometimes temper us, yeah. pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. Especially when first people come to the temple, oh, I want Prem in a week. Mm. And that becomes yeah. like, no, 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 patience, patience. Yeah. Cook the pot. That's why we talk about a clay pot. Well, Don't good. have a kacha, a raw, uncooked clay pot, and then try to cook kiln in it. Mm. Kiln, you need a kiln. I, learned, I was thinking about that word from Kevin's dad today. Kiln. You need a kiln for your spiritual life to become more mature, not mad. So this brat is to establish that. That Krishna is our one and only life. But there's a speciality. For those in our line, in our mood, we follow with that mood of Katyani maha mahi maha yogi nyadishwari nanda gopasutam devim patim me kurute namaha. Devi pati. So when we sing tavevasmi tavevasmi na jivami tvayavina iti vigyaya devi tvam nayamam charanantikam. Who is that devi? Devi is Shimati Radhika. So if our stai bhav is in ashray to Shimati Radhika, then she is our pati. It's a mood, it's not like a, a formal relationship. It's that when we are hearing the story about how Rati Manjari got in trouble. I don't know if you were here for that story, nice story. <clears throat> how, you know, if anything endangers that relationship, then it's like, oh no, my life is at risk, in jeopardy. Because that is my pati, that is my source of, it's like, if I lose that, then who am I? So for us, Katayani Mahamai is, it's actually, it's an interesting thing. Like for example, with Mahadev, there's three tapas, Sadashiv, Gopeshwar, and Shankar, Rudra. So with Kat, this verse also, Katayani Mahamai, Mahayogini, Purnamasi. Nanda Gopasutam Devi. That Devi is Radharani. Patim me kurute namaha. Oh Radhara, oh Krishna, I know that if you tell her, then she'll accept me. Oh Nanda Gopa Sutam Devi. Oh make Radharani my protector, my maintainer. I surrender to her. Adishwari. Yes. Adishwari. 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 Her name is Adishwari. So. That's one of the ideas. And so, but, you know, this is why Katani Vrat is a long discussion. First of all, we have to take shelter that it's described like there's, there's gatekeepers and we have to get their blessing to advance one says to the next. But ultimately, Krishna, who is Radharani, is the only one who possesses Krishna and can give Krishna. 
And those followers of Radharani, Durga, Katyani, they cannot give Krishna. They can do what? Avarana Sambaribe. They can remove the avaran, the covering of Maya. We sing. Kripa Kori Maya Jal Utai Jakon Aki Deki Suvishal Chinmaya Bhavan. Oh, Mother, please. Maya is also, we shouldn't be disdainful towards Maya. Maya is Maya, Mother. And so she also, you know, she just sometimes has to be like a, like a strict mom, like Ananda. You twist your ear. <laughs> sometimes mother has to twist the ear of the child. Okay, right Arjun? Sometimes you get your ear twisted. Yes? Okay? So Maya is Maya. But she's our friend. She's our mother also. So we see. Oh, Kripa Kori. Oh, mother. Uttaya Jakon, now lift up the veil of your illusion. The veil of illusion comes by our desire. Mm -hmm. we, we want it. Mm -hmm. And so now we're saying, okay, now we're setting the intention. Please, now I've had enough. Please now lift the curtain and let me see Krishna's abode. Tatashta Shakti is a very thin, it's marginal, it's right on the shore. All you have to do is, oh, okay, now I want to be with Krishna. And even here and now, we can do that. Krishna is just it's on your tongue. Krishna. And so we're praying to Maya, Atashri Krishna Namadi Mabavet Grayam Indriya Sevan Mukhiji Vidosvayam Evas Purattida. Krishna Nam is transcendental and non different from Krishna. So therefore, why aren't we experiencing Krishna? Nabavet Grayam Indriya, the material senses cannot completely have that interaction with Krishna. Therefore, Sevan Mukhiji Vidho, by a life filled of service, we become liberated even in this body. We become Jivan Mukt when our life is only Krishna Seva. And so then the veil of Maya is lifted and we enter Krishna's abode. But there's first Katayani, then Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya established relationship. She established our relationship. So we also pray to her. Purnamas Yoga Maya. Who sent her? Jamuna Devi. In this brat, the gopis went to the bank of the Jamuna and they prayed. They didn't know what to do. All they knew is that they were starting to get afraid. Oh, life after life, we've had many patis. And our mind and senses, it's described in Bhagavatam, we have many wives and many husbands. All our senses are like wives and many people are trying to control us. That's like the, you know, the dark side of, you know, no control without love and affection. Like it's only, you know, people trying to, like the demons and trying to enjoy the gopis. So their mood was, we don't want to be sold into this kind of lifelong slavery. So let us only have relation with Krishna. And they had that deep desire. Why? This is another point about Katyani Brat. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to stop with this, I promise. <clears throat> who were the gopis who performed Katyani Brat? Many categories. Shruti Chari, Smriti Chari, Upanishad Chari, and Veda Chari. This is the one main category. All the personified scriptures, Shruti, Smriti, Puran, Upanishad, all the Shruti, Smritis, and Upanishads, that's literally all of our personified scriptures. They were doing sadhana, practice for thousands and thousands of years and lifetimes, praying to appear in Braj. And then when they took birth in Braj as gopis, they performed this Brat. So all the personified scriptures perform this brat. Then different expansions of Sita, the Mortis of Sita that Ram made. They were praying, oh Ram, you made us like a Morti, but you still didn't completely accept us. May we accept us? And Ram benedicted them. And they took birth as gopis. So all those golden Mortis of Sita that were made over thousands of years as Ram was, and Sita was in Valmiki's ashram, those took birth as gopis. So a Morti, we don't think of Morti as just a statue. It's not just a statue of Sita. All of it, because Ram was Patibrata, right? I mean, Ram, Ek Patibrata. Ram had to, he wouldn't marry another, only one Ek Patnibrata. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
all those mortis of Sita he made, they give Pran Pratishta. And so they were all like alive, but they were waiting for this relationship. So they appeared again in Krishna Lila's gopis. And the Dandakaranya Rishis, sages, they were praying for a relationship. But even Ram could not fulfill their desire. Completely said, they were chanting Gopal Mantra, and he said, you should come as my, in my next incarnation, my original incarnation as Krishna, as gopis. And so this is not performed like any kind of simple thing. They all perform this brat after lifetimes of preparation. Like in spiritual life, we don't know how long we've been practicing to get to where we are now. Could have been a long time. So, but they came and they were praying and doing this brat. And the end of this brat is the last point that we'll make now. Who comes to give the benediction? That is the person you're worshiping. So Katyani, Goddess Katyani didn't come. Purnamasi Yogamaya came before as Guru. She is like Guru. Before the Vrat started, she instructed them how to follow. She gave them instruction how to follow. But at the end of the Vrat, who came? Radharani Lalita Vishaka? Before Krishna. Before Krishna. Yeah. And then Krishna came. Because they had never met Radharani. Yes. Also. They hadn't associated yet with her group. And so this Vrat is to kind of connect us to the... The shelter that we're aspiring for is under the guidance of Srimati Radhika, relationship with Krishna. Not trying to overstep her. That's also Rasli, the, the lesson. Not trying to overstep Srimati Radhika. And that will get into your point um, that you post on the chat. So the idea is Radharani came with Lita Vishaka and blessed the gopis in their performance and their vrat. And then afterwards, Krishna came. And I think that's another topic for another day. Like symbology behind what he took and all that, so, so we can discuss either it another way, day. Either way you look at that, though, even if you say, okay, that's like the hidden. Is what Param Gurudev says directly. Yeah, but you didn't. It's it's definitely not Maya who came. It's Param Gurudev writes, yeah, Radharani or Krishna. Or they both came. All. So when you do a vrat, whoever appears to give you a benediction, that's like the object of the worship. And so that's why tw- the Ishta day, that's why verse 25, t- 22, Krishna says you're doing my archan. And Parangrita makes that point crystal clear. He said, Godias, we don't worship demigods. But in Braj, it has to be a little indirect because if the gopis were directly worshiping Krishna, it do- doesn't fly in Braj. They, Krishna said, go worship Giriraj. Don't worship Indra. Krishna didn't say worship me because that would change the mood. And so this Braj is done like their only object of worship is Krishna and Radharani. They don't know it yet, but Radharani. Mm. Because when she comes, then Krishna says, when Krishna, the next verse, Naimaya Vesh 26, Naimaya Vesh Diyam, Kama Kamaya Kalpite, Varjita Katita Dhanya, Yipraya Vijaya Neshate. Krishna says that any worship towards me never goes in vain and it's always beneficial. It never leads to material like desire, sense gratification. Never does. He said it becomes like a barley corn when roasted, will not sprout. So the seed of material desire will not sprout because I've already accepted them. And so Krishna gives that benediction. He says, now go back home, girls, and soon I will accept you. What does he do? He, then after that, they come into the shelter and the guidance of the Nitya Siddhas, eternal associates, rather than any her party. And then under their guidance for the next year, they get trained properly. And then Ras comes. So this is the idea is that this is, the mood is very important. That's why we have to understand the mood. And then when we're, when we're saying even the verses during the puja in the morning, this is like, it's a meditation of, like, like when we sing this Kabe Krishna Danda Pabo song. This is Radharani's mood. And we are trying to serve that mood. We're not imitating that mood or taking that mood. We're praying with that way. And... Why? Where's the praman for following this? Aradya Bhagavan Raja Satanista Dhamma Vrindava Ramya Kachi Vipasana Prajubade Vagene Kalpata Shumat Bhagavatam Pramanam Prema Pumarita Mahamshi Chitanya Matamitota Prata Runa Padha Mahaprabhu's essential teaching is the topmost object of worship, Krishna and Braj. Topmost abode, Vrindavan. The best form of worship, the Vrindavan Gopis. The evidence for this, the Shumat Bhagavatam, and the ultimate goal is praying. Krishna praying. This is the philosophy of Mahaprabhu. I don't regard anything else. 
So where's the only place in the Bhagavatam where it says? So therefore, if Mahabharu is saying the evidence is the Bhagavatam, the goal is Prem, and the best form of worship is the gopis, what is the form of worship that was performed by the gopis? That is Kaptani Brat. Two chapters. Two chapters given to that. And so there, well, where's the question of it being bona fide or unbona fide? The point is that are we qualified or are we under the proper guidance? And sometimes, you know, like I said, don't go to Keshigat. Vaishnavas have to warn us because Katani Vrat, it's like after Chattamasya, after Karti, you still want to keep going. Okay, it's like first you have to give a warning sign, disclaimer. Be careful, you might lose everything. But losing everything, you can gain everything. So, those are just a few points. There's so many things to discuss, you know. But it's, it's a deep, it has to be deeply grounded. That's why it's not encouraged just to randomly follow. It's a deeply grounded process. But a lot of Vaishnavas follow, Ayendrapu followed. And some of his, those who are with him know that. And we, I was talking last year with a group of the boys with Jai Jagannath. I think Dev Madhu at some point, I won't, just, you know, and the others were following. But it's not something that was, is done like whimsically. It's a very serious brat. Not too open. And also not too open. It's confidential. Any so any? I, I yes. have like a, just like a logic Crowdsource it, go for it. No, everyone can correct me, but I don't think anyone in highest form of Parakya Ras would ever pray. I, I want a situation where I need to like sneak out to meet Krishna because there's so many obstacles and I want I want Parakya, I want Parakya. And their mood is Parakya because that's just in the love. But who who of them is like, I want to have to sneak past my in laws, I want this. That's another good point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Like, no, no, both. I was going to say that um, because some of the points of why people are confused, why this threat is done, and you touched on it a lot, that why are we praying so much about direct relationship with Krishna in the prayers? Which is saying, you know, I'm giving Achman to you, Katani Devi. And it's reminding me, like, let me taste the nectar of Krishna's lips. Very direct to Krishna. And kind of to your point, Tandavu, it's even though there's the mood of that, and you can correct me also, even though there may be a mood, we're in the line of, of course, serving Radharani under her guidance and not wanting to be uh, with Krishna directly, that doesn't mean we don't have love for Krishna in that same way. That we, it was all through her, you know. It, that, it's described that as... Yeah. Um, it's actually in Vilaku Svanjali that Radharani told one gopi, like indicated to go be with Krishna, and she said, Radharani, it's like leaving you and going to Krishna, it's like leaving the most priceless thing and going for something not, like, I already get everything from my relation with you, and so there's, there's, no, there's no lack, like when we talk about even Sakiras, there's so much bliss in that we can't even comprehend it. So there's, there's no feeling of like, that's why it's described that the Sakas, even married to other gopis, they never are like, like desiring to be with the gopis because their relationship with Krishna completely fulfills them. So the point is also in Madhurya, so it's described in Jayavadharma, we'll get to this point. Whether we are in, even in Madhurya Rasa, in Kamanuga Bhakti, there's two divisions, Tatat Bhavit Chamai and so within Tat Tat Bhavit Chamai, it's still under Kamanuga Bhakti and Madhurya Ras. It's still under that classification. The point is that you experience all of that relationship through Shrimati Radhika. And so that complete experience is not lacking. So, but it's through that channel, that medium, that current. And so that's why it's described Priya Surupe, Dhaita Surupe, Prema Surupe, Sahajavi Rupe, Nijana Rupe, Prabhureka Rupe, Tatana Rupe, Swadilas Rupe. Who is Rupa? It's Priya Surupe, it's directly like the form of Radharani. It's described Rupa Swami looks just like Mahaprabhu. And Rupa Mandri looks just like Radharani because she's so absorbed in Radharani's service. So it becomes like Priya Surupe, Dhaita Surupe. And so the point is that there's so much like. Even, I'll give you another example. When we do Guru Mantra, once Gurudev asked, 
What, what is this Krishna Anandaya Dimi? How is Guru doing this? And is it Radha like Krishna with a long A or is it Krishna? When we sing Anyabilashta Shunyam Jnana Karma Dhyanabhitam Anukulena Krishna Anushilanam Is it Radha or is it Krishna? And so you can debate this forever but the ultimate understanding is that it's both. And so we don't want to go too far one way or the other. Oh, oh. stay away from Krishna. Balanced. It's both. Radha Krishna Pranamor Jugala Kishor Jivana Melani Ar Gatina Yar and as that is described in the spiritual realm, the relationship is completely pure. There's no even I, any like the slightest tinge of any fault. Prem nirmal bhaskar. Prem is completely spotless, like this pure effulgence, like the sun. No darkness in the sun. So you're gonna go to the sun and find it. No, it's pure effulgence, pure love. So in that realm, that's why we're even talking about the devotees. Devotees are. Krishna's, like if you worship Krishna properly, then you have to develop some quality by which you can worship Krishna. And therefore we say, Diksha Kale Bhakta Kare Atma Samarpan. When you take this vow of worshiping Krishna, then Krishna makes you like himself. Kare Atma Sam, transcendental, Satchirananda. Then, Se Deha Kare Chirananda Moya, Prakrita Deha Charanabhajai. With that transcendental form, you can serve Krishna. That's what we're going towards. And that kind of relationship is completely pure. And that's our philosophy. That's what we're going towards. So there's no, there's no, sh there's no shame in that. Um, now, just so, yeah. Any other points? I wanted to mention that Bhaktivinoda throw a point in the chat. But any other I, points? I just wanted to, I guess, say in simple terms uh, that Madhurya Das, even if you're a Mandi, like Dr. Bhavi for me, you still love Krishna. Yeah. Like there is romantic need and desire, but it's all under Anugatya and Rad like you said, Radharani is everything, so there's no need to go separately to Krishna. But that there's there's permission. Because I think a lot of time we hear Hare Krishna in such a way where it's like, Don't look at Krishna, there's a lot of that and then we there's like almost a confusion with the Pratyani Brat with the prayers. But it's like without that Staya Bhav of loving Krishna there is no Madhurya Das. You're not you don't have any roots in that rasa. There has to be that attraction to Krishna and that madness, like you're saying, with the gopi, like that desire is there in all of the gopis, no matter what group they're in. And then according to where they are, they will relate with Krishna differently, whether it's under Radharani's guidance or with the the other um, some group. Or correct me if I'm wrong. So the gopis did this but First of all, they didn't get Krishna as their partner, no. and and what they got was like you're saying, Radharani comes, or you said Devi comes, you thought the Guru comes, Krishna comes, and then they get a chance to go to Ras Lila, and there the whole point of that situation was establishing Radharani. Yeah, glorious. Yeah, that's why I wanted to lead into the quote of Bhaktisiddhanta Prabhupada because I so thought it ties in. They, they were trained. There, they were, I didn't still think they needed were help. They still had so bad in mind. They yeah. started their training with this song, Gopi Geet. Yeah. When they saw that Krishna That's why we sing Gopi Geet every day during this breath. Then they learned, oh, we thought we were so fortunate. We're the best. Yeah, pride slips. And yeah. Pride of the good fortune came. Yeah. So Katyani Brat leads up to Ras, which leads up to taking shelter of Radharani and understanding her. When she leaves, right? Is that and last, last Ras Lila? When she leaves yes. and says her hands to her new one? And the beautiful thing is that Right? They're in Purvarag. They haven't met Krishna. This is the first time when he comes and takes their clothes. And then in Ras Lila, they're meeting with him. And only to understand Krishna more, they have to do it within separation with Radharani and the gopis. So the entire rest of their time on Bom Lila is in separation for, from Krishna practically. That's why he leaves in Mathura and Dwarka. So that they can be under the guidance of Radharani and the gopis. And for the rest of that time, be in separation under the guidance of them and learn relationship. And we were talking about that. Like, without the separation, you cannot understand it. It's just meeting, meeting, meeting. But first, the desire for meeting has to be there, and that's established in Katyani Brat and the Ras Lila. So, I guess in conclusion, um, going back to the beginning point, is baby steps and just developing that mood that 
Krishna is Maya. We want to develop the mood of Sharanagati. That's a basic thing. Develop the mood of Sharanagati. Anukuyasa Sankala Gora Pratikulya Savarjana Rakshi Shapiti Vishwasa Gopi Tvai Varangta Atmanik Shepa Kadapanya Sadhanga Sharanagati. Gopi Tvai Varangta is a Patri Nekri Patenama. Baby step level. That was like a rap, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we're trying to develop. And this is a, and Krishna is we sing Suna Hera Sika Jan Krishna Jagatera Guru Krishna Vancha Kalpaturu Krishna Baba Rog Nasi Te Chatura. This is Krishna. So this is our philosophy and if we develop that then everything else will come into proper alignment and then very happily blissfully we can pass our time, pass our life. Mahaprabhu doesn't even pray for liberation, he just says Life after life, let me have devotion for you, relation with you, and your devotees, and serve you. That's all I want. Life after life. Najanam Najanam Sindarim Kavitam Vajagadi Shagam Ramanujan Manijan Manishwari Bhavatad Bhakti Mahaiti Gitari. This is our mood. Mahaprabhu Shiksastakam has this mood of Patime Kuritema. Why? Ashlishiva Pada Tantanastu Mavadarshana Marma Tankarotu Vayata Pura Vidurata Lanti Rama Prana Tasvasa Eva Napara. You are my Pran. So Mahaprabhu didn't. Mahaprabhu gave these eight verses. He said, don't, I'm not giving you so much because then you'll say this is important, that's important, this is important, that's important. Eight verses, this is what's important. Kali Yuga, too ati chalak, too intelligent, too clever. Studying everything, reading every. Rukha Swami said, don't read too many books. Find the essence and then everything comes into clarity. Because otherwise Vyasadeva wrote so many books and then people became confused, what's the object? So then he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. And without 10th Canto, there's no Srimad Bhagavatam. 10th Canto is like everything's leading up to that. And everything in 10th Canto leading up to Ras Lila. Ras Lila leading up to Radharani. So the point is that understand that Ashlishavapada <clears throat> Tankpinasum. What is that meaning of that verse? Yugayatam Nimeshina. What's the meaning of that verse? Shunyayatam Jagat Sarvam Govinda I remember Jai Jagannath posted a meme of that. Seventh verse of Shikshastika, it's so funny. <laughs> okay, anyhow, the point is, like, that mood is such an important and powerful mood. We don't want to sentimentally, like, imitate, but understand that that is, you know, the mood we want to ultimately develop. And that's the mood that we require to go to his realm, because then Krishna see they actually want it. And whether we go there or stay here, either way, we'll have that relationship. Yamitram Paramananda is based on divine friendship and love and connection and relationship, and that's what we are all ultimately desiring anyway, and seeking for anyway. So therefore, no longer do we need to chase after the mirage of that in this world. That's Katyani Brat. That's why the Sastras did it to show us all the personified scriptures did this brat as gopis to show us. This is what is really going to make you happy. Because this is what you're... Don't chase after the mirage anymore in this world. We run after the mirage and then we, we embrace the cactus and get hurt. And then after some time, we do it again. That's <laughs> so what happens. It's a cactus. In the desert, you were running after a mirage. In my house. The cactus in my house. Really? You hit it? That's it. Oh my god. I cut a little close then, huh? Sorry. So the point is, with Katyani Vrat is, okay, we don't need to do it anymore in this world. We don't need to try to find our fulfillment in this world anymore. Finding Krishna, then everything else in this world we can do. Mahabharata says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, right in the end, after Shiksas to converse, it's a very beautiful thing. It says, don't give up your duties, don't become like a madman. He said, be controlled. You want to be like the gopis? Confidential and serious and very controlled. So he gives Mahaprabhu himself, Chanitana Sharitamrita and Dalila, after Shiksastakam. He says, like the, and he, he defines Parakya Ras. He said, like a lady at home will be very dutiful and maintain all responsibilities. And then, and everyone gains trust in her. And then when she has any extra time, she can meet and talk with her beloved. So he said, Bhakti should be like that. Relatives, people, oh, yes, everyone's very good, taking care of everything nicely, being responsible. They don't want to hear, oh, it became like Mira. No need. 
If you want to be like Mira, then it means you have to be like Prahlad. What happened to Prahlad? Everybody knows the story of Prahlad. A lot of, a lot of pain and trouble. So, Mahabri suggested almost like a simpler path. Internally develop that mood. Externally, go about your life. Take all responsibilities. Internally develop that. That's what Mahabri told Raghunath Das Goswami. Ghare jao na hao batul. Krami krami bhava pai sindukul. Don't become mad. Dire dire. Gradually, gradually. You can cross over everything and come to me. Okay? Go for a Hari hari. Dire dire. Dir samire. Don't do the brats. Do we normally do Dira Samire Jamuna Tira in this brat? No, we do for Kesha brat. What happened to the quote? Oh, the quote. You were supposed to do The quote. The quote is that Bhakti Prabhupada was asked about in the Ras Lila, Krishna, Radharani leaves and Krishna finds her. Then they walk together and then the gopis come and find their footprints, right? But they see at a certain point there were two footprints, then there was only one pair of footprints. And then. They followed those one pair of footprints, and after a while they found Radharani like laying on the ground senseless. So what happened is Radharani and Krishna were walking, and then Radharani, they sat down, because one place to see some like deeper impression when there was one pair. One pair of footprints means um, they sat down, Radharani like, just was carrying her for a minute. But then he was at one point decorating her hair, and then he disappeared. And so Pakistan the Prabhupada was asked about why Krishna disappeared and he became very upset, right? Yeah, I don't know if you have the quote with you. I but couldn't understand what was being said. And I, I, I couldn't understand the word that Prabhupada But Pakistan the Prabhupada became so upset with the devotee, he was like, stupid question, nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> why did Krishna leave? He just became angry. And he was just like, basically, not angry like so much externally, but he basically was like, <clears throat> Someone has the quote, they can read it. But basically, I'll read it afterwards, no problem. If you can read it, I'll share it. I have it on my phone. The basic point was he didn't want to discuss it. In that mood he had. Because the mood of Vaishnavs in our line is, Jugala Milan, Sukhira, Karan, Jivana, Chaditi, I could give up my life to range meaning of Radha Krishna. And Shri Krishna, Virahe, Radhikara, Dasa, Amito, Sahiti, I can't tolerate Radhika's separation from Krishna. And so, just hearing that, it's, the reason that quote is there is to show his mood of like Radha Paksha. That's the reason of that quote like being told by the Vaishnavs. Just to show Bhakti Santa Prabhupada is so much Radha Paksha that he didn't even like to discuss this or think about it. So that's really why it's there. But the point is the reason that's a separate topic, the reason why he left is a separate topic, but ultimately it was to establish her supreme position. But Bhakti Santa Prabhupada because of his mood there being so Radha Paksha he didn't want to talk about it. Therefore, we sing Radha Paksha Chadi Jejan Sejan Amito Sahite Nari. Cannot tolerate anyone not Radha Paksha. They may be so great, but I'm not interested. Jejan Sejan Jebe Avese Bhave Take. Whatever they may be, they may be such an exalted person. I don't need it. Raghunath Aska Swami, what does he say? Sorry, Prabodhananda Sarasvati and Radha Rasudaniti, which means the book of pure uh, divine nectar. Radhika's like this ocean of nectar. <clears throat> he says that I would rather be. Very intense quote. I'd rather be a dog in Braj taking the remnants from Madan Mohan than a servant of the Queen's in Dwarka. <laughs> so, but he says, I'll never go, but if I hear Radharani's there, then I'll immediately run there. So it's not a criticism of anyone, but it's like the idea of that mood of, you know, ultimately, Uma Rama Satisachi Chandra Rukmini, they're coming from Radharani also. But why would I leave that? Because that is what is the sweetest natural love. It doesn't have any kind of cause, any condition, any like artificial like, oh, because of this, because of that. In Parakya Ras, Krishna doesn't give anything. They only give to Krishna. It's unconditional. In other Ras, oh, Krishna gives me a palace, Krishna gives me sons and daughters and facility. No need. I only want that service. So we're going to do some Mahamantra. Welcome, Nandi. Who's going to serenade us?